Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, we just thank you so much for everyone that's here, and Lord, we just thank you for your word, Father, for, Lord, the lessons that you teach us, Father, each Sunday and Wednesday, Father, and Lord, just I pray for our people that they sit down through the week and read your word and study it, Father, and Lord, just uh, come closer, and I just ask that you draw us closer to you, Father, and Lord, I just thank you for Brother Mike as he leads our church. Lord, I just lift him up to you, Father, and just ask that you, uh, this morning, just speak through him. Lord, just I thank you for Waylon. I thank you for the way he leads our song service. And Lord, for Corey and all those in our church, Father, that uh, is teaching your word, Father. And Lord, we pray for our Sunday school teachers. Lord, I thank you again for loving us. And we just lift all those up, Father, that, uh, that have uh, sickness issues that they have going on in their lives father and lord just ask that you heal where you see fit thank you again for loving us in jesus name we pray amen well matt's gone this morning and make a couple of announcements to everyone you notice your insert this morning in your bulletin uh it's about the lottie moon week of prayer so the beginning today we will have a, our week of prayer for the Lighty Moon Christmas offering. And our goal for that is usually, uh, we usually try to raise about $3,000 for that this year. So if you'd like to give for that, there, I didn't even look. Are there envelopes in the pews this morning? They're in the, uh, they are. Well, and so you can make that. Uh, if you don't have a, an envelope uh, for that purpose, you can just write it out and uh, just put on there, the Lighty Moon Christmas offering. There's our school principal right there, Miss Anita Watson right there, just came in. <laughs> Good to see her this morning. And uh, you can, uh, but, but go through these days, starts today through next Sunday. There's eight days of prayer, specific prayer for our International Mission Board and lift those things up in, to the Lord in prayer. Inside your bulletin, you'll notice tonight the children's musical is at six o'clock. Now, the personnel committee is meeting at four today to work on the budget items for the next year, but uh, I'd remind you to be here tonight, and uh, each class is going to provide uh, food, f finger foods, fellowship after the musical tonight, and I know our children, they've been working hard on this. They have really seen God at work in their practices, and they're really excited about sharing with you tonight, and so plan to be here at six o'clock for that. Then Young at Heart is this Tuesday also. Don't forget that. Their big Christmas party. Uh, anything y'all want to say about that? All right. Is it white elephant or just a, kind of a white elephant gift? Sir? Kind of, sort of. All right. There'll always be somebody bring some nice gift and they steal it from each other. It's just... <laughs> It's not pretty what goes on in there. So, but anyway, that's this uh, this this Tuesday at eleven o'clock. Plan to be here for that. And then uh, don't forget this Wednesday night, Brother Ray Anding is going to share his life story with you in our Wednesday night service. If you don't know this, dear brother, I tell you what, uh, Brother Ray has been a part of founding this church some thirty. 8, 39 years ago, and uh, Brother Ray has just been a blessing to so many people. He's going to share his story this Wednesday night, and so you plan to come be a part of that. And so, uh, different things coming up. Uh, look on your in your bulletin for all the activities, uh, youth having their lock-in this coming week. Don't forget, mark on your calendar, Saturday night, December the 24th, is going to be at 5 o'clock our candlelight service. It's going to be special, be a little different this year than maybe it was the last few years. And so hope you can come, be a part of that. If you're here, we'll start at 5. We'll be out by 6, so you can be gone and back home uh, with your family events. And then Sunday morning on Christmas Day, don't forget, we're only having the worship service. There'll be no Sunday school, no evening service, only the 1045 worship service on that Sunday morning. You come, we're actually going to give everyone that's here a gift. So you come and be here uh, for that day. We are looking for two people, two groups, two maybe couples would be a better way to say it, uh, who's willing to take up a, uh, uh, making a few changes. Some people are moving around, but a couple that might be willing to prepare a Wednesday night meal, get in that rotation of those that prepare Wednesday night meals, and someone to prepare breakfast uh, as we do each Sunday morning. 
really pray about that. You've been thinking about somewhere to serve the Lord and the Lord's church and the Lord's kingdom. What a great place to do that. Uh, because I'll tell you, when we have meals, we have a bigger turnout. Amen. I don't know what the connection is, but when there's food, there's more Baptists there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Hadn't figured that out through the years, but I hope you'll come and be a part of that. And I uh, look forward to you uh, uh, worshiping the Lord with me today, okay? Let's just worship God. Brother Wayland. Um, just to add to uh, tonight, um, I know all the Sunday school classes have been informed. You can come and start decorating as early as 345. I and Miss Stacy Phillips will already have everything kind of set up for you, what your table is. You can come decorate. You can start bringing food after that point. Um, kids need to be in the sanctuary that are in the children's choir at 515 for practice, to kind of go over, mic check, et cetera. And um, I think that's all we have. Thank you. All right. Let's stand together. Shining, it is the night a 
of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh night divine O oh, night when Christ was born O oh, night divine O oh, night O oh, night divine truly taught us to love one another his law is love and his gospel is peace chains shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name christ is the This is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play, and the director who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. The Glory of Christmas. My name's Joseph, and in the Christmas Nativity play, The Glory of Christmas, I play Joseph. That's right. I was born to play this role. Joseph has no clue what to do when it comes to babies. So, in order for him to play the role of Joseph, we got him an infant simulator doll from the local home act teacher. So, you know, he could practice a bit. It's an insane shriek for baby. It's a burp. It's a burp? Oh, so put your fingers under 
and try to find the... Where's the spine on this thing? I don't know. And check the front. Joseph is terrified. I don't blame him. Babies don't even have kneecaps. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Burping like a boss! Uh, yeah, way to go, fake dad. I heard things may not be going so well with the infant simulator doll. Hey, Joseph, your mom's here to pick you up. Yeah, coming. As you can see, my mom's house is full of antiques. So I did what any good home economics teacher would do. I sent Joseph home with a, a baby egg. I think about Joseph, like Bible Joseph, a lot. What it would have been like for him to have an angel come and tell him that his wife is pregnant with God's child. He would have had to really dig deep and find his, his compassion and his understanding because he really, really loved her. My dear Mary, it is going to be a long journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem for the census, especially with your belly being so humongous. With, 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 with child, Joseph, the line is being with child. <sighs> right. Sorry, ma'am. Is the age difference what's bothering you? I want you to know, it doesn't bother me. It's... Okay, please people, let's just take it from the top. I understand that Joseph is radically underqualified for all he's about to encounter. But isn't that the type of people God uses? The most unlikely folks to do the biggest things? Yeah. <laughs> Seems like those are the ones he always picks. Because he's a God that'll never give up on us. Ah! Ha-ha! Yes! Ah-ha! Ah! We need to get I have swaddled! Ha! Ha-ha! Throughout scripture, we find time and time again where God uses people the most unlikely to do the most amazing things for his kingdom. Moses stuttered. Rahab was a prostitute. David committed adultery. And through David, the family tree, we find Joseph. And God tells us that Jesus will come from the lineage of David. He repeatedly uses the least likely and certainly Joseph was no exception if we could accomplish God's, God's divine glory on our own there would be no need for a savior but we couldn't and we can't so God sent his son how qualified are you and I to do God's work you may think that you don't have it he would never use somebody like you or somebody like me. But when we take and give all who we are to Christ, the work is up to him. And he gives us the capabilities to do what he's called us to. Y'all listen as Dawn reads Joseph's story from the Word of God. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had, ha had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means... God is with us. 
When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but he had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he called his name Jesus. Long ago, God made a promise that He would send a star one day to crush the power of the evil one and open up a new and living way and that way is for our people so whosoever will for God's only son is this morning star let his brightness shine within your heart. A star is born, holy, loving light. A star is born, shining through the night to free us from our sin and shame and guide us to the break of day the star is born to the world God sent the true light And Jesus was his name The Word made flesh The Lamb of God To take our sins away how his light expels our darkness greater than a million suns like radiant beams our day stars grace and peace remind us of the warmth a perfect love a star is born holy loving light a star is born shining through the night to free us from our sin and shame and guide us to the break of day, the star is born. Oh, 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 oh. the star is born, holy, loving light. A star is born, shining. us to the break of day a star is born a star is 
star is born a star James, what else could we say but wow? wow. <laughs> if you don't know this guy, four or five years ago, he was an atheist. He didn't believe in God. 100%. 100%. Amen. Transforming power of God in a person's life. Amen. We're going to let the children go out for Children's Church right now. All right. I used to could sing like that. Well, in my dreams, I did one time at night anyway. All right, buddy. All right. Danny, Danny, you're too old. You're too old. <laughs> Come on back and sit down. You, ain't, you can't go with the children's church. You had to stay on, Danny. You had to watch him all the time. Isaiah chapter 9, turn there with me, verses 6 and 7. I want to talk to you about this Christmas child today as we talk about the uh, Christmas, as we move toward Christmas, the celebration of Christmas. I don't know about you guys, but for, for me, a uh, number of you here are preachers or have preached before, but sometimes the uh, stories of Christmas and all are sometimes the hardest messages because you want to keep it fresh. You don't want it to be a rehearsed or a stale presentation, and yet the beautiful story that it is to try to keep it fresh and to think about the Lord. This star uh, that James sang about today, that star that would come from the root of Jesse, the Bible says, that God would raise up. Uh, he is the light of the world, the Bible says. We celebrate Him as the light of the world. Uh, this week, that was I talked about that a lot out on New Mexico in the mission trip last week. We talked about the, uh, uh, the significance of the lights and everybody having lights up at Christmas time and how that Jesus is the light of the world and, and how that light called us to, to salvation. It was a light that saved us and it's a light that set us apart from the world. And so we think about that today. We think about how the Lord Jesus Christ has done so much, and I think James was a, a perfect person to sing uh, that song today. Isaiah chapter 9, would you stand with me in honor of the God's holy word, verses 6 and 7. I want to read it. I know you've heard these verses many times, but let's read it and listen to what it says. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. Now remember, this is hundreds of years before the birth of Christ. The prophet Isaiah said, And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. Some say that comma there. Uh, you, you understand in the writing of the Bible, the Hebrew, uh, some believe that, that probably that comma there may not have been there. It, it, so it may have just been calling him the Wonderful Counselor, but uh, some put the comma there. The commas, the punctuation was added later. Uh, and so it says he's the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And of the incre increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. And upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it, to establish it with judgment and justice, from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, of course, it's talking about when the Lord comes back and establishes His kingdom here on the earth, uh, what the Lord will do. Let's pray. Father God, as we gather for Scripture study this morning, Lord, we pray the anointing of Your Holy Spirit that would help us, Lord, to, to teach, to preach, Lord, the, the good news of Jesus Christ. God, may we never take Him lightly. May we never take His purpose, His message lightly. But God, today, help us to examine and to appreciate who He is. And God, what He brings, what He offers, and what we need to keep our eyes on. 
God, not the success of this world, our success in this world. But God, how you gauge success. Success is entering your kingdom and being a part of your family and knowing your peace. Today, Lord, we ask you to speak through your word, by your Holy Spirit, to our hearts. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What is Christmas about? Well, the Jewish people are celebrating the Hanukkah, the festival of lights during this Christmas season. Uh, we are celebrating the one who is the light of the world. They celebrate how God is the God of light, the one who turns us. Paul said uh, there, God called him to turn people from darkness to the light. And that's really the ministry of Washtenaw Baptist Church, is to help turn people like James and others who've been a part of our church from darkness to light. That's what we're about. That's what our ministry is about. And, and sometimes churches, as churches, we forget that, that that's what God has called us to do. Isaiah the prophet here, as he wrote these scriptures under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he was talking about the centerpiece of Christmas, of the Christmas story, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so I want you to notice three specific things in our outline here today with me. I want you to notice the child's special nature. We're going to look at his name also today. And then we're also going to look at his nobility. Quickly today as we notice these things, I want you to note first of all this child's special nature. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 talks about when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son. What is the fullness of time? That just basically means when God was ready, when it, time, when it was time for Jesus to come, God sent Jesus. Now, He didn't have to create Jesus, did He? Because Jesus has been there from the beginning. We see in the, very, in the beginning of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, where God said, let us go down and create man in our plural, both us and our plural there that God reference, is referencing, I believe, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How He's saying that Jesus, and by fact, the Bible tells us that Jesus created all things. All things were created by Him and for Him. So we know that Jesus Christ had been there from the beginning. But I want you to notice with me some things about His nature here that stand out about the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, He was gentle. He was a gentle Lord, and He is this child that is born. I think a reference how that He came as the Lamb of God. He came, uh, he will come back as a lion. I remind you, when he sets up that kingdom and establishes his government, I want you to know that he's going to come back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. But he came this first time. He came giving himself willingly as a sacrifice for the sins of many. And so we see the nature of him was a, as our gentle God. One who was willing, the Bible says, he was willing to humble himself and depart heaven and come here and give himself for the sins of the world. When that time was come, when God was ready, he sent his son. The second thing I want you to see that he was God. Not only was he gentle, but he was God. He was fully God. A son is given, the Bible says. That's the reference that God gives us in this. Uh, there in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 says the child was born. The second thing it says, that son was given. And so as we look at that today, the Lord Jesus Christ gave us Himself. He gave us Himself in a form that we could talk to, that we could, we could communicate with in the Son, Jesus Christ. Now, God the Father is spirit, the Bible says, and those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. He dwells in an unapproachable light in heaven, the Bible says. And so it's so important that we understand that, that when you get to heaven, the God that you know, the, the portion of God that He said, I'm giving you to communicate with you, to know you, to, for, to experience you, and you to experience Him is Jesus Christ. 
God revealed Himself. He's called the Son here, but as the story uh, that the, the, we sang this morning about Emmanuel and the verses that we read about Jesus being Emmanuel, it's just literally that name is God with us. God with us. And so that's who the Son is. He's just God transferred into human form, born as a babe, gentle, fully God, and number three, he was a gift because it says here, he is a son is given in Isaiah 9, 6. Oh, I don't know about you, but aren't you glad God gave us that gift of Jesus Christ? Oh, what a gift he is. And, and he was and he is today. Do you know that God's still giving Jesus as a gift today? In fact, if you're here this morning and you've never received the gift of heaven, God will give you that gift today. God is a giver. And that gift, when you open it, when you receive it and you open it, that gift will pour into your life. And who knows, one day you may turn out from being an old, old hippie freak like old James was and when that didn't believe in God, now you do believe in God. Amen? Now you, one day you might be able to sing. Amen? I don't know. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, that, that didn't mean some of you, all right? Some of you just missed the boat. That wasn't your gift, all right? But uh, what a gift He is. Not only did He give us forgiveness, not only did He give us the love of God, oh my friend, but God, the Lord Jesus Christ, gave you Himself. You know what, when you get to heaven one day, I've heard people say, when you get to heaven, wonder if God asks you this or if God asks you that. I don't believe God's going to, when we get to heaven, God's not going to be asking us things, really. Before you get into heaven, you don't have to pass a test. I've got a better modern day explanation for what's going to happen. You know, you go through the grocery store and you run them groceries under that scanner and you scan things, you know. I think you're just going to walk under a scanner and God's going to scan whether there's some God in you. Amen? Hello, are you with me? Because that's what happens when you receive Jesus Christ. He's God in you. And when you get to heaven, God just says, man, God, there I am. I'm God in Him. I, I, He's received me. We're not God, but we have God in us. Oh, my friend, the Bible says that we are to play, we are to receive Jesus Christ. And the Bible says to all of those who receive Him, to them He gives a power to become the children of God. John 1, 12. Oh, my friend, the Bible is saying to us there that when you receive Him, when He becomes uh, the, the central, principal part of your life, and you just want to follow Him, you want to be more like Him, the Bible says when that happens, He puts you in His family. And oh, my friend, when heaven, heaven's about God just recognizing you have received Him. And you know what? When you receive Him, the Bible says you'll be changed. When you get this gift, you know your kids are going to open a lot of gifts around the Christmas tree this year. And you know what? They're not, those gifts probably are not going to change them, their life. Those gifts will be nice. You spend a lot of money for them. Guess what? For some of them, they'll play with them for 15 or 20 minutes, and then they'll forget about them, and they'll never play with them again. won't mean anything to them. We'd like to think it would, but it really doesn't. But I'm here to tell you, if you receive this gift, it'll change who you are. It'll change how you look at life. It'll change what's important to you, your priorities. And if it doesn't change your priorities, and if it doesn't change the way you look at life, and if it doesn't change the way you live your life, it's a good chance you've never really opened this gift. Are you with me? You know, you can sit in church and never have opened this gift. You might have one sitting at your feet. But to be honest, you remember the day you kind of went up and took it, but you never really opened it up? You've never really experienced it. I've been doing this series on faith on Sunday mornings. And, and you know, faith is, about, faith is about not only picking up your gift, but it's about opening your gift. It's about living it. It's about allowing Christ to come in you and live in you and through you. You see, friends, a lot of people, a lot of people pick up their gift and they say, well, I, let's look at it this way. When you pick up your gift, you become religious. When you open that gift and experience it, you become faithful. 
You become filled with faith. You want to live for God. You want to live the Word of God. And you believe the Word of God lives in you. And my friend, that's the difference in religion and faith. It's the difference in having a gift and opening that gift. That gift won't benefit you if you don't receive it. It won't benefit you if you don't open it. If you don't apply it to your life. What a gift He is. Oh, my friend, when I think about Romans 3.23, the Bible tells us that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Oh, my friend, but I want you to know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In that government, in that kingdom that we read about here in Isaiah chapter 9. So I ask you in this Christmas season, are you going to receive and open and, and accept the gift of Jesus Christ, who He is, His nature. Second thing I want you to see this morning is this child's special names. Uh, verse 7, uh, the last part of verse 6 and verse 7 talk a lot about the names of this Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, no single name. You, you really can't encompass who He is probably in one single name. You, you, you can't, con I mean, he has so many things uh, on the walls up here, our posters, uh, our banners that we've put around in different places. We've, we're kind of just kind of drawing on some of the names of the Lord Jesus Christ. But oh, we would have to cover these walls so much you couldn't see paint if we put all the banners up that all of all the names of Jesus because it'd cover the walls. I'm talking about just the ones that are in the Bible itself. How important it is that you and I understand the fullness of who Jesus is. Yes, He's Jesus, but He's also Lord. He's also our Master, our Savior. When you open the gift, you're going to find out He's Christ. And that word Christ is just another word for the Messiah, the one who delivers us. Oh, He's the King of kings. He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. The Bible says He is the rose of Sharon. The Lamb of God, the bright and the morning star is what the Bible says. How important it is for us to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And I could go on and on and on and share more of those names. But Isaiah is saying that this child who is going to be born in these descriptions where I'm about to read you five names, uh, five descriptions that he says there's really, he's basically saying to us, it's almost impossible to describe Him. But Isaiah is saying, I'm going to do my best, and I'm going to share with you, first of all, He's wonderful. Do you know what that means? That means He is our amazing God. Oh, my friends, when it says He, when he is one that makes you filled with wonder, does Jesus still amaze you? Could I ask you that question this morning? I'm here to tell you, when you open that gift, and when you fully receive who the Bible says He is, I want you to know He's wonderful. And I want you to know that you will be amazed at Him because you've never known anyone like Him. Do you hear me? He will amaze you. And if you're not amazed, I would venture to say you've not met my Jesus. If you're not amazed, you may have met society or the secular world's view of who Jesus is. You see, some folks today are coming along with their own view of who God is and who Jesus is. They think that Jesus is the, the one that came into the world to just say, I love you, and I don't really care how you live your life. Just do your own thing. If you're happy, I'm happy. But I'm here to tell you that the first message that John the Baptist preached, and then this, he was the pre-runner of Jesus Christ, and the first message that Jesus Christ preached was repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see, God says, I want to I so influence your life that you want to live like me. I want you to so be, I want the things of heaven to come into your heart. He's not saying, I want you to meet me, and then you just keep being as godless as you were before you met me. He's not saying, if you meet me, it won't change your life. 
He's not saying if you meet me, you can keep living like the devil. He's not saying it won't change you at all. In fact, God says if you meet me, if you know me, if you receive me, oh, it's going to bring a wonderful change in your life. You see, that's who God is. God is the God of change. You may say, well, I like who I am. Well, sometimes we like our sin, don't we? Sometimes we like the sins that we're committing and we just want to hang on to them. But I'm here to tell you, God wants to set you free. Do you realize that sin can become bondage in your life? We are enslaved to sin. And God wants to set us free from all of that. God wants to set us free. He wants to give us that eternal mindset, that eternal joy. Someone said once said to Gypsy Smith said, I always seemed happy. And people asked him why he was so happy. He said, I never got over the wonder of Jesus Christ. He said, I never, I never lost the awe of Him loving me. Oh, my friend, have you gotten over it? Sometimes as Christians, we, we are we're, we're just spellbound by who Christ is to us when we get saved. And you know what? As the years go on... We just kind of, it just kind of becomes something that we take for granted, don't we? Do you ever take God for granted? And I'm going to tell you, when we start taking God for granted, you know what we're doing? We've backslidden on God. You know, the Bible says that a, a backslider in heart is filled with his own ways. That's what the Bible says. But my friend, the Bible tells you and me that when Jesus comes into our life, he is wonderful. And my friend, if we're not amazed at God anymore, we need to get out of that backslidden condition and we need to get filled with the ways and the thoughts and who Jesus is. Sometimes people ask me, they say, I've lost the fun, the joy of being a Christian. And, and they, they'll ask me, they'll say, what do I need to do about it? You know what I do? I, if, uh, if a husband came to me and he said, I've just lost the joy of loving my wife. What do you think I need to do? I said, well, first of all, I always have a question for guys like that. I said, if you're not loving your wife, who are you loving? Because you're going to be loving somebody. Might be just loving yourself. What do I need to do? Start loving her again. You just need to decide to start loving her again. You know, it's decisions that we have to make. And that's the way it is with God. You have to start listening to God again. You have to start spending time with God again. And you have to decide that you're going to love God with all of your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength. You know, sometimes when you've lost the wonder, you have to stop and turn around and get back close to God. Are you with me this morning? Or am I speaking another language? It's awful quiet out there this morning. Let me tell you all something. I spent the weekend up in, uh, in Fort Ice preaching at that prophecy conference and came back today, got in late last night, came here this morning. I'm awake and ready to preach. And if I had an amen every now and then, I might just preach a little better. Amen? amen. All right, so help me out here. Second thing, wonderful, he's the amazing God. The counselor, he says about him, he is our approachable God. You know what I love about God is that he is our counselor. Oh, my friend, think about that. Sometimes we just need somebody to give us some direction, don't we? Sometimes we need somebody that, that'll listen to us. Somebody that's not too busy to listen to us. I want you to know that no matter what you're going through, God has time for you. You know what I love about God? You know the Muslims believe that God's kind of way out there and He's not a personal God and He's really too busy. He's kind of gone on vacation sometimes and, and God's not really there for them when, always when they need Him. They just got to try to do better. I'm here to tell you something. Our God, our God, which by the way is different from their God, but anyway, uh, I, I want you to understand that our God, our God says, I am here. Come unto me, all of you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He says, come to me and basically crawl up in my lap and, and sit down here and, and let's talk about things. Oh, he says, come unto me. He challenges us. He invites us to come. Come boldly, the Bible says, into his presence at that throne of grace and cry, Abba, Father. Sometimes you just need 
somebody to listen. You know, sometimes, though, let's admit it, sometimes we don't want nobody to listen. Sometimes we're so stubborn, we only want to hear ourselves. We only want to hear what we think. Or we only want to hear what our friends think. But I want you to know that, and, and I told somebody, I saw something on the internet this week, and I, I shared with them up there at that conference. I said, you know what I heard this week? And I, I shared that thing. I'm not going to share what it is because I don't know if it's true. But they said, oh, it can't be. I said, I don't know. I saw it on the internet. And if it's on the internet, it's probably true. <laughs> Sometimes we only want to find what we want to hear on the internet. Sometimes we want a friend to just tell us what we want. You know, if a, if a lady's deciding to leave her family and run off with some other guy, you know what she's going to do? She's going to gather some ladies around her at work who will tell her just what she wants to hear. And she'll say, well, I talked to some friends, and my friend said, <laughs> you need to talk to God. You need to get the counsel of God. And not what your friends think, or not what the internet thinks. And so we look at this scripture, what a counselor he is. Isaiah 29, 29 said, This comes from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. Oh, my friend, he is the opinion that we need today. Psalm 16, 7 says this, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. Number three, he's called the mighty God. Uh, he's called our mighty God. You know what that means? That means that no matter how big your problem is, He's got the solution to it. He can fix whatever is in your life. Now let me say this. You, you may need a miracle. Guess who can do it? God. You may need God to step in. You know what the miracle is? The definition of a miracle is the supernatural intervention of God. Sometimes you need a miracle. Where else are you going to go for a miracle? But you know, when I think about this mighty God, this mighty God is also a God who looks inside of us. This is a God who has the right to say to us, sometimes Sometimes we don't need a miracle. Sometimes we just need to get on our knees and get right with God. Sometimes God may call something out of us and say, hey, you need to deal with that issue in your life. That's what's stopping you from getting what you need right there. You need to understand that He is our mighty God. I think about all the ways He's mighty. He's mighty in power, yes. He's mighty in what He can provide, yes. He's mighty in His perception and understanding, yes. He's, he's mighty in His promises of the things that He will do. And He's mighty in His ability to protect and to provide for us. Oh, my friends, there's so many ways. Jeremiah 32, 17 says, Ah, Lord God, behold, Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by Thy great power, stretched out Your arms, and there is nothing too hard for You. Do you know God that way? When you have a need, do you go to God first? Listen to me. Do you go to God first when you have a need? Because you say, you know, or, or do you try to figure out how to do it yourself? Or maybe you talk to some friends. Or maybe you go to your boss. Or you've got all these things, these things that need to happen in your life. How many times is God the last one that we go to? Are you with me? Sometimes God is kind of like that old spare tire in the trunk. We just pull Him out when we have a flat. We, we decide that God, uh, we, we, just, we don't want to bother God. Let me tell you something about your God. He has the answer. He has the ability to deal with your problem. And He's waiting on you to ask Him. The Bible says He knows your need before you even ask, but He still says ask. You're still supposed to go to Him and ask Him for His involvement. So He is your mighty God. Do you see Him that way? As we talk about this child today, do you understand that what they looked at in that manger, of course the kings, the, the kings that came later and brought those gifts, they understood who He was. The shepherds understood after the angels told them. I don't know how many of them really fully understood just how mighty of a God that He is. Oh, my friend, we have so much more advantage today as we look at Christ on this side of, of everything that's happened 2,000 years later 
we should appreciate the fact of who he is and what he did even more so than they were able to before he had accomplished all those things. Oh, my friend, we ought to see him as the mighty God. Number four, the everlasting Father. Uh, the last one meant he's the almighty God. This one means he's the affectionate God. As I said, it kind of ties in with being the counselor earlier. earlier. Uh, but you know, the Bible tells us that he had no beginning. As far as we understand, we'll not know when, did, when God began or, or his end. You know, you get to heaven, that might be one of those first questions. You run up and say, God, when did you start? You think you'll ask a question like that? I think you'll just be so happy to be there. You won't really care where God came from. And, or another. You don't care about the timetable. You know, that's a wonderful thing. Time is something that's only an earthly thing. Time's not really a heavenly thing. Time's just a man-made thing. It's not a God thing. As the Bible says, a, 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 you know, a, a, a thousand years with God is about like a year with us. Oh, my friend, for God, the, the, the time is not important. I don't think we'll worry about those kind of things. But as our Heavenly Father, as we think about who God is, I think we're just going to want to sit down by Him, just like a child whose father had been out of town, and they love their father, and when he comes back in, we just want to hold on to Him when He comes back in. We want to sit at His feet. We want to listen to Him. I... I feel for people who, who've come up in life maybe never knew their father or never got to spend much time with their dad. You know, because it's so important to have that one who is a, that overseer, that protector, that provider, to feel like that one that is, has, has brought security and strength and the Scriptures into the home. Oh, my friend, the everlasting Father. Psalm 68 verse 5 says that He would be a father to the fatherless. He's not some distant God. I want you to know today, if you're not saved, if you've never opened that gift of Jesus Christ, I want you to know if you'll open it, God, you may have never had a father, but God makes himself your father today. But you've got to open the gift. You need to open it. You need to receive it. And then the last one, the Prince of Peace. He's our assuring God. He assures us of the, in the storms of life. You know, life's not easy. Y'all have heard me I say it time and time again here. And sometimes people, the world is constantly saying, well, why did this happen? And why did that happen? And boy, there was a school shooting over there. How, if there's a God, how could God let that happen? And boy, there was a tornado came through here and people were killed and houses were destroyed. How could that happen if there's a God? Why would God let things like that happen? And I don't believe in God because of those bad things that happened. Oh, my friend, I want to remind every one of you that first of all, God never promised you there'd be no storms in this old life. I want you to know that we live in fact. God promised you. He said there are going to be storms. He said if you build on the rock, He said when the, when the storms come, He said you'll be all right. But if you build on the sand, oh my friend, and the storms come and the rain beats against your house, He said it's going to come tumbling down. I want you to understand this about God. We, God has promised you heaven this, excuse me, Miss Principal back there, but this ain't it. Amen? This ain't heaven. I know we're not supposed to say ain't, but uh, this isn't it, is it? This is a, this is a world. This is a, a world where, where the little G God, the God of the old devil himself has his way. You don't think the devil's not having a play day right now? Oh, man, when, when, people, think they, when, when, uh, when people think they read birds and cats... And they think girls can just say, I'm a boy today. I may be a girl tomorrow, but I'm a boy today. I'm just going to swap from one day to the next. I'm just going to decide what I want to be. You know what, my friend? We are calling evil good and good evil. And there are things today that make no common sense whatsoever. It's called the reprobate mind from Romans chapter 1. And I want you to understand that today. That's the world that we live in. But I want you to know something. No matter how bad it is, the outside of me, <laughs> you know, I hear some of this stuff. I'll be honest, sometimes I'm a little light-skinned, and sometimes my wife says, my ears get red. And my wife says, when my ears get red, just leave me alone. 
Just let God deal with me when my ears get red. And I hear some of this stuff and my ears get red. Amen. I get mad. Amen. I'm, a, I'm from Okaloosa. You got to help me out there. Amen. But, but I just get mad at some of that stuff. And, I, I, and then I see the pain out there and the, the abuse of children and the, the, the sex slave trafficking in America today and the, the child, children being captured and, 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 and all the, the sicknesses of the world today. And then I'm not mad. I'm just I'm hurt. I'm broken about that stuff. But I'm here to tell you, and it affects me. Sometimes it makes the hair stand up on my arms. Sometimes it makes my ears get red. And sometimes I get, I get goosebumps over some of it. it just, it's just so strange. But I'm going to tell you, it never gets me down in here. Because inside of me, there's a peace that passes all understanding. Inside of me, I remember there's a God who's got this in control. There's a God who's, who's got the buttons and he could, he could step in and stop all the pain in the world. And He will one day. But when He does that, that's called heaven. And this ain't it. Today I'm in the storms. Today I'm living in a crazy world. Today I'm living in a a world that thinks it can determine what's right for itself, and it's not doesn't even have enough sense to get out of the rain sometimes. Well, I like this, or I think this is okay. God don't really care what we like and what we think is okay. We live in a perverted world today. Not only is it a poison world and a painful world, but it's a perverted world. Oh, we take something and it's a perversion and we say, that's wonderful, that's fine, that's okay. My friend, God is in the business of taking that which is messed up, that which is painful, perverted, that which is, that which is destructive today, and healing all of that. That's why it says here, He's the Prince of Peace. I love how He told those disciples when He sent them out two by two. He said, when you go into a house, basically, when you step into that house, declare to them that the peace of God is here. May there be peace, He says, in this place. God brings peace. And I'm here to tell you, we live in a world of turmoil today. People are hurting. 100,000 people a year will die this year from from fentanyl use. Now those 100,000 people didn't just say, I'm going to take a bunch of fentanyl and kill myself. Did they? Most of them just said, <laughs> most of them just said, my life is miserable. Somebody give me a pill. Somebody give me a smoke. It's my marijuana. It's laced with fentanyl. And, and somebody, I, I'm miserable. I'm miserable. Well, this pill might be dangerous. I don't care. Just give me a pill. I'll take it. Maybe it'll make me better. People are so miserable in this world that they'll drink anything, smoke anything, pop any pill to have a little bit of hope. To have a little bit of peace, even if it just lasts four or five hours. So they can pop another pill, smoke another joint, take another drink. And I'm saying, open the gift. Open the gift. He's the Prince of Peace. You never need another drink. You never need another joint. You never need another pill. Trust God. Come to God. Know Him. Man, the outside may be the storms are raging. But I love that story of Jesus when the storms were raging and they were out on the ship and Jesus is asleep in the bottom of the ship. Why was He asleep? Because He's the Prince of Peace. <laughs> Man, they were freaked out. The disciples were, but He's asleep. And He stood up and He said, Peace, be still. And the storm was over. That's what God can do in your life, in my life. He's that assuring, calming God. Isaiah 26.3 He will keep in perfect peace 
those whose mind is stayed on Him because He trusts in you. And then last of all, the child's, this baby's nobility. The government shall be upon his shoulders, it says there in verse 7. I'll not read, reread all of that, but three things is going to happen. Here's what you need to understand about the God who's coming back, about this Christ child. First of all, he's going to return to this earth. You do know that. I did this prophecy conference this weekend, and we did a lot of studying of that. And the signs of the times, and boy, it was just so much there about what's happening in our world, how many signs there are, how many things are pointing to the return of Jesus Christ like never before. Man, I, I believe, I wouldn't be surprised if the Lord came back today. And there's nothing to prohibit Him from doing that. He could come back today. He's going to return to this old world. He's going to establish His kingdom here. The Bible tells us in Revelation, and the second thing is He's going to not only return to the earth, He's going to reclaim the earth. He's not just going to return, He's going to reclaim it. Put the second one up there, Daniel. That By that I mean, He's not just coming back as a visitor, He's not just coming back as a lamb, He's coming back as a lion. The Bible says in Revelation 5, it says He's going to have one foot on the land, He's going to have one foot on the earth, in the sea when He comes back. And you know what that means? And he's going to open that last seal. You know what that means? He's saying, hey folks, <laughs> game over. I'm claiming everything that's in the water. I'm claiming everything that's on the land. It's mine. Nobody was worthy to open that seal. Nobody was worthy to claim it all. It was a deed to everything that is in all of creation. He created everything and he's coming back to claim it one day. You understand that? Before you put yourself on the team, before you refuse the gift and you put yourself on the team of the devil and you understand that one day you think right now but the devil's winning. And maybe I guess if you keep in score like a football game or something, you might say, well, he's winning in this old world today. But I'm here to tell you something. He's a loser. He is a loser. And God's going to step back in this world one day and say, it's all over, big boy. Go back to hell from where you came from. And he's going to drag up some chains and he's going to chain him up down there. I'm going to tell you, that day's coming. You say, well, I know, but I'm just still enjoying playing in the devil's world. Well, I'm here to tell you, there's a payday someday. There's a payday someday. And then the last one, He's going to reign upon this earth. Not only is He going to return and reclaim it, He's going to reign upon it. Boy, I'm telling you, He's going to establish His kingdom. The government's going to be upon His shoulders. He's going to establish His kingdom here. First of all, that thousand-year millennial kingdom. And then He's going to, and there, there's a whole process in that involved. The devil's going to be released at the end of that so that all those who were born during that time period have a right to choose between salvation or not salvation. And, and they're going to have a right to choose Christ. But I'm here to tell you, my friend, that there's coming a day when God's going to say, Devil, shut up and sit down. And He's going to make the rules. And He's going to make the weather. And He's going to stop all the pain. All the perversion. He's going to stop all the, all the tears, the Bible says, will be wiped away. Yeah, there's going to be that thousand years. The devil's going to be released. And we know after that. But there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. The Bible says God's going to say, Enough. I don't know about you, but I long for that day, and I say it could happen today when the Father looks at the Son, Jesus Christ, and says, Hey, Son, go get your bride. Today is your wedding day. Now, the gift, we close with this. Brother Whalen, if y'all will come, prepare the music for the invitation. The gift. He's given you a gift. And there's a gift you could give Him at His wedding day. What? Preacher, what are you talking about? You know what you could give him? You could give him yourself. 
I'm here to tell you, he, the, He's going to invite you to be a part of that wedding. He's going to invite you to come and, and witness that. In fact, I, I don't know what you believe, but I, I believe during the seven years tribulation on earth, the church is going to be participating in that, that, uh, that uh, the judgment seat of Christ, but then also the wedding, the, uh, the, the wedding to the Lamb. Between the church and the Lamb. All that will be going on. But I'm telling you, the only people that's going to get to go is the people who've received the gift, opened the gift, taken it into their life. Now here's the, here's the invitation this morning. If you've been to church, there's been a gift there with your name on it. Preacher, what about some people say that some people say that everybody don't get no gift? Well, I believe you do. Because my Bible says, whosoever will. And I believe God's got a gift for you the gift of salvation, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of love, the gift of eternal life, the gift of being part of his family, the gift of heaven, where you could be a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You've got to decide if you're going to pick yours up. And some people, I think down through the years, they've, they've decided to, to maybe you know, pick it up, consider it, look at it, think about it, come to church for a long time, sit there, put it on the pew beside them. Isn't that nice? Boy, God's offered me a gift. And they, they looked at it and they thought about it. And they've, they've been, been sitting there for years. In fact, they've been looking at that gift and been thinking, do I really want to step out in faith? Because see, when you open that gift, you're going to be overwhelmed by it. And it takes some faith to open that gift. It takes faith to say, hey, I want whatever God has for me. I want that. Back when I first got in the ministry, I had a bunch of charismatic groups met with me, and they, they liked how I preached, and they wanted to pray that I got the Holy Ghost. I thought, well, dear Lord, if I got to have something else, I want it. I want everything God's got for me. So they prayed over me, and they want to know why I didn't get the Holy Ghost. In other words, why didn't I speak in tongues? And, and I said, well, you know, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't going to make it happen. Now, if there's something like that going to happen, it's going to happen because God did it. It ain't going to happen because I did it. Well, that didn't work well with him. But, but uh, I said, but my point is this. I wanted everything God had for me. Sometimes we don't, we just want a little bit of God. We just like the idea that there's a, there's a gift over there sitting by us. We just like the idea that we got a little religion. I'm here to tell you, the Bible does not say that if you get a little bit of religion, you go to heaven one day. It doesn't say that. The Bible says you need Jesus. And He's in the box. He's the gift of God. Will you open him up, embrace him, receive his forgiveness, reprioritize your life, and say, I so love, admire, accept him that I want to be like him. I want to follow him. That's what repentance is. Repentance is just saying, you know, Brother Ray going to share his story with us this Wednesday night. I've heard a little bit of it before. You know, he was sorry before he got saved. Can you imagine Brother Ray was sorry? <laughs> and when you got saved, Brother Ray, you reprioritized your life, didn't you? And see, God will change you if you open the gift. God's got a gift with your name on it. Have you received it? Have you opened it? Have you embraced it? That's what salvation is. Receive Him. Bow with me. Let's bow. Heads bowed, eyes closed. As the music prepares to play this morning, oh my friend, right now that gift is reached out by God. It's God just extends it to you this morning and He says, he says, I so love you. No matter what you've done this morning, I love you. You may have made a lot of mistakes. 
God says, yes, you have. But I love you. And I'm willing to forgive all those mistakes. Open the gift. Reach out and take the gift this morning. Open it. Embrace it. Receive it. If you've never done that, you can this morning. I'm going to be standing down front. You come to me and say, Pastor, I want the gift of God. That's all you've got to say. And I'll explain to you what you need to do, how to pray and receive that. I'll pray with you what you need to do to receive the gift of God. If you've not joined this church, if you need a church to join, if you're looking for a church, you want to put your membership, tell me you want to do that here. If you want to come to this altar and pray, just some things you need, to, somebody you want to pray for, some things you want to get right with God, you come pray this morning. Father, we commit this invitation into your hands. Lord, the most important time of this service. Because God, it's you're dealing with people's hearts right now. There are people here right now, Lord, that's probably thinking about whether or not they've ever opened the gift. Whether or not their religion is their life or faith. Oh God, help, them to help us to see that without faith it's impossible to please You. And that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Oh Lord, help us to see that. Help us to open that gift. Help us to receive it, to embrace it and who You are. And to stand in wonder of who You are. And to just want to sit at Your feet. God, have Your way this morning. Help us to take steps of faith this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand. Take my life, Come on, friend. Lord, if, you need to make, if you need to open that gift, if you want to receive that gift, you come this morning. I'll tell you what you need to do. Make my life useful to Thee. Take my life. Let's have just the music play. Would you bow with me? Some are still praying here at the front. Oh, do you know the joy of what's in that gift? Is He wonderful to you? Is He your counselor? Your mighty God? Your everlasting Father? Your Prince of Peace?
I'm going to ask some of you ladies come up here. Pray with her. Pray with this sweet lady and her family. She's going to find out tomorrow about the little baby and whether Kenneth is doing okay and how he's doing this little baby. Tomorrow's a big day. We need a miracle. Let me just say, be back at 6 tonight if you can. Plan to be here. Finger foods afterwards. And as we dismiss, you let God have His way in your life this week. And if you need someone to talk to, you come talk to me, okay? Let's make sure you got that gift open in your life. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, it's just so great to be in your house today just to feel the appearance of you here. Father, as these ladies are praying for the, the child and her mother, Father, we just ask you to be with her, comfort her, be with the child. Father, it's just so great that we have a place that we can call our church, that we have this opportunity to come to you when we need to. And Father, we just love you so much that everything that you're doing in our church, that we see that the change of the people for the community that, that's come out of this. Father, we just want to thank you so much for the message that our pastor has given us this morning just to remind us of the things that, that we need to know. And Father, we just continue to love you and we just want to thank you for loving us. All these things in your most precious and holy name. Amen. <laughs>